Okay, this sermon is entitled, Seven Lies Regarding Eternal Security. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listener. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 14 reads, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Now, when it comes to the doctrine of eternal security, a.k.a. once saved, always saved, the scripture is copiously clear on this subject. And we have plenty of verses in John chapter 6 that affirm once a person trusts Christ alone for salvation, they are eternally secure. Now, this does not apply to people who are trusting in themselves. So let's take a look at a few verses here. Turn over to John chapter 6. Let's start off with verse 35, and it reads, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now, if you think you can lose salvation, you have partaken of the wrong bread. You have not received the bread of life or the water of life, and that's why you think you'll perish. Now, in John 6.37, we see a reiteration of this truth. It reads, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Verse 38, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me, And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Verse 40, And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So we see several promises here. We see that the believer in Christ will never thirst, they'll never hunger, they will never be cast out, God will lose none of them, and they will be raised up at the last day, and they have everlasting life. Now, anyone who can read these verses and still think that you can lose salvation is 100% spiritually blind, unsaved, and perhaps a reprobate. Yet we have scores of people out there who hold to this garbage, and it's just proof that they believe in another Jesus and another gospel. So, in keeping with these opponents of eternal security, they're guilty of many lies regarding this subject. Number one, they claim that those believing in eternal security just want to keep sinning. Well, my rebuttal to this would be, you guys want to keep sinning too. It's just you can't admit that because it destroys your pretension of self-righteousness. And here's what's ironic about this. These false prophets out there, they preach a false gospel. They do so deliberately, habitually, they practice sin when they preach their false gospel, and they do it unrepentantly. So it's kind of like according to their own standard and system, they would be damned because they keep on sinning themselves. The second lie against eternal security is they claim that we accuse those who fall away as never really being saved to begin with. Now, I don't do that. I just claim that if a person falls away, whatever that means, that they're still saved. Because the Bible says that God is faithful, it also says that if we believe not, he cannot deny himself. So I don't teach that a person was never truly saved to begin with just because they fall away. I believe that a person was never truly saved to begin with if they've always believed a false gospel. But that's a different issue. Number three, they claim that we're giving sinners false assurance. Now, the reason why they say this is because they think eternal security gives false assurance. When the people making the accusation, they're the ones with false assurance. Their assurance is based on them. If you're actually saved, you have true biblical assurance based on the finished work of the cross. And there's nothing false about it. Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, paying the entire sin debt, finishing our salvation, saving us to the uttermost, as it says in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, is true assurance. Number four, the next lie these people are culpable of is they claim that we have to admit that those who claim they used to believe are still saved. Well, that may be the case, because once you believe on Christ, you're saved forever. But my contention would be that most of these people who claim they used to believe never really did, and you have to believe biblically to be saved. You can't believe on Christ for temporary life and be saved. You can't believe in Christ for nothing and be saved. 
And you can't add works to your faith and be saved. So just because somebody claims they used to believe in free grace or eternal security means absolutely nothing. However, if they did believe the true gospel, they are saved forever. These people are only saying that to avoid condemnation. Number five, the opponents of eternal security claim that the reformers started eternal security and that no one believed it before the 16th century. In other words, before the Protestant Reformation, nobody believed in eternal security. Now that's a bunch of garbage because anyone who believed the Bible believed eternal security and the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. So once again, that's just a false accusation. Number six, these people claim that the early church fathers didn't believe in eternal security. Well, I've got some quotes by some of the early church fathers that prove they did. Okay, number one, Julian of Toledo writes, The righteousness of faith by which we are justified, that we believe in him whom we do not see, and that being cleansed by faith, we shall eventually see him in whom we now believe. If someone believes in Christ, he is saved by faith alone. I have other quotes by the um, early church fathers that prove that they believed that salvation was by faith alone which is part and parcel with eternal security. St. Origen writes, The apostle saith that the justification only of faith sufficeth. So the early church fathers may have some patristic writings that denied this at one point, but that doesn't mean that they always rejected it. And then finally, the seventh lie about eternal security is that you're a Calvinist if you believe in eternal security. Well, this is not true at all because Calvinists have a false version of it. Calvinists believe in what's called the perseverance of the saints. That is not eternal security. Eternal security is the one who believes on Christ will never perish, will never hunger, will never thirst, has everlasting life, and will be raised up at the last day. The perseverance of the saints means that if you're truly saved, you will persevere to the end. And if you don't, you were never really saved to begin with. And that's not eternal security at all. That is a false security contingent upon human effort and remaining in the faith. And that's all Calvinism does, is it just perverts everything the Bible teaches. They have fake grace, fake eternal security, a false Jesus, a false God, and it's just a total counterfeit. So these lies do not fly. And the only reason these eternal security rejectors come up with this stuff is because they're not saved, and they just need ammunition to try to destroy the truth of Scripture. And this is what they resort to. A bunch of stupid lies that are uncorroborated with anything more than just other lies. And stupid arguments. And the only people that believe this drivel made by these non osassers are other unsaved devils who agree with them. And that's all there is to it. So watch out for these liars and these blasphemers because the only reason they're rejecting eternal security is, like I've already said many times, they're not eternally secure. They do not have real salvation and they don't have eternal life. All they have is something that the Bible doesn't teach, which is temporary life that can be lost. And if it can be lost, it will be lost. So the conclusion of the matter is that everyone who rejects eternal security will inevitably go to hell based on their own teaching. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.